Connective tissues are much more variable. They come in different, with different characteristics. Um, for example, some connective tissues are liquid, others are solid, and even others are kind of a semi-solid or gel-like material. But what distinguishes each connective tissue from one another is not the cells, like an epithelial tissue. If you recall, epithelial tissues are largely based on cells. How many layers of cells? What's the shape of the cells? Whereas connective tissue is based on the extracellular matrix that the cells produce. This extracellular matrix could be liquid, it could be a gel-like material, it could be a solid calcium phosphate material like in bone, but that's what distinguishes the different types of connective tissue. Collectively, connective tissues do a lot of different things. They can protect, they can support, they can hold things together. This is an artistic drawing of what a connective tissue might have inside of it. So let's first try to find a cell type. So we have here fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are very common in connective tissues. What this fibroblast is doing is producing fibers, hence the fibroblast. The fibers that this cell is producing are extracellular proteins. They're proteins found outside of the cells. It looks as if this cell is producing collagen fibers. Collagen is a very strong, flexible protein that's very abundant in connective tissues. There's also a type of fiber called reticular fibers. Reticular fibers can offer a lot of support, uh, a lot of structural integrity to an organ. And then finally there are elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, as the name tells you, are highly elastic. They can stretch and then kind of recoil back. So organs that have to be able to stretch and recoil might have connective tissues with a lot of elastic fibers. Uh, your skin has elasticity, it can stretch a little bit, blood vessels, your lungs, all have elastic connective tissue. What else can we see in here? A lot of other types of cells. You might have adipocytes, those are fat storing cells. You might have some immune system cells like eosinophils, neutrophils, plasma cells, mast cells, macrophages. Those are all cells of the immune system. But I want you to remember that you're going to have cells that produce fibers, fibroblasts, and you could have different kinds of fibers, collagen, reticular, and elastic fibers. Okay, let's start to go over the different types of connective tissue. And connective tissue can then be subcategorized. One of the categories is known as loose connective tissues. Loose connective tissues have very loosely arranged fibers. Underneath that heading of loose connective tissues, there's three types. There's areolar connective tissue, there's reticular connective tissue, and there's adipose tissue. So let's look at areolar connective tissue. It's one of the most abundant and widely distributed connective tissue in the body. So it's all over the place. It's got a lot of different fibers, collagen for strength, elastic for stretchability, reticular for structure. So it's got all the fibers. It's got fibroblasts. It's got a lot of other types of cells in it. But what it does is it's kind of this filler. Okay, where you've got one organ and then another one and a little bit of space there, a lot of times you find areolar connective tissue. So quite often we'll call it packing material of the body because it's in and around nearly every body structure. It's in your skin. It's very deep down in your skin. 
So it's in the dermis of the skin as well as the subcutaneous layer, which is even deeper underneath the skin. So that's what this drawing shows. This is a little section of skin and way down deep in here there's some areolar connective tissue. There's also a lot of adipose tissue down there. But there's areolar connective tissue down in the subcutaneous layer. There's also some up in here between kind of the dermis and the epidermis. But that's what areolar connective tissue is for. It's kind of a packing material found all over the body. Gives the body some strength, elasticity, and support. The next example of loose connective tissue is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is often called fat. So adipose tissue happens to be areas where there's a large number of specialized fibroblasts that store large amounts of triglycerides. The cells look almost as if they're empty in these pictures, but they're filled with triglycerides. So that's one major function of adipose tissue is to store energy, act as energy reserves. There's actually a couple different types of fat. There's white fat or white adipose tissue and there's brown fat. Brown fat is interesting in that there's a large number of mitochondria that generate a lot of heat. So Organisms that need to generate a lot of heat might have large amounts of brown fat. When we're born, a baby fetus, an infant, has a small amount of brown fat, which helps keep that baby warm. It helps generate heat. Animals such as bears have brown fat. They need to generate heat when they hibernate. But most of the fat in our body is white adipose tissue. Where do you find adipose tissue? We find a lot of it underneath the skin in the subcutaneous layer. We found a lot of it on the heart and surrounding the kidneys. Here it offers protection to those organs. We find it inside of bones. It's called yellow bone marrow. And then it's found padding around joints and behind the eyeballs. So this, these areas offer a lot of protection. If we need to store more energy or we have excessive energy in the body, a.k.a. we eat too much, a lot of that extra energy gets converted into triglycerides and stored. So we might have belly fat because we need to put this energy somewhere and we put it in our adipose tissue. The third loose connective tissue is known as reticular connective tissue because it has a large amount of reticular fibers. These reticular fiber looks like branches of a tree. Uh, that's actually what reticular means. Reticular means branching. And these fibers offer some support, some framework for an organ. So we find it in organs that if they didn't have this material, they would kind of be soft and would, they wouldn't have any structure. So we find them in three major organs, the liver, the spleen, and lymph nodes. And this is a drawing of a lymph node. Inside that lymph node, you would find a lot of these reticular fibers, these branching fibers, and cells that produce the fibers, which are known as reticulocytes. A uh, reticulocyte is just a specialized fibroblast that produces reticular fibers. I often call this twigs and berries because it looks to me like little branches, little twigs, with then these little berries. The little berries are cells. They're reticulocytes producing the reticular fibers. So those were the three loose connective tissues. Areolar connective tissue, adipose tissue, and reticular connective tissue. The next video, we're going to look at dense connective tissues, where the fibers are packed more tight together, 
and the tissue is a little more dense, a little, a little uh, tougher than the loose connective tissues.